this formula, if you were going to measure the height of some object at time t, this is more or less what would happen. You would have gravity accelerates at negative 16 feet per second squared. If you're going to model that in terms of time, you have to write 16t. I'm sorry, uh, negative 16t squared, that's the coefficient. Gravity accelerates at negative 32, and the negative is because you're going down, right? Uh, okay, well, then what you would have if you were trying to model this is you would have essentially how fast your object was to start with. So you would have your initial velocity. How is this a limit? Because I learned this in physics. That's a good question. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's sort of think about what's happening here. Okay. Yeah, because Initial we're to get velocity shorter, times shorter, time, shorter. right? Because if you're going 10 feet per second, you'd want to multiply that times time. Then you'd have your initial height. Okay. Now, uh, just to make things as simple as possible, let's suppose that we are 100 feet up in the air and we drop a rock off of the library. Okay. Just for kicks and giggles. So you would have this formula. Well, the question that you might want to ask is, say, you know that the instant you let go of the rock, it is not moving at all. Right? So its velocity is zero. After one second, how fast is it moving? After one second, how fast is it moving? So if you plotted this, have something that started at 100, right? It would go down, it would go down faster and faster until it hit the ground, right? So we're sort of trying to look at how fast is it decreasing? Well, if it was a straight line, right? Let's say a second is here, just for the sake of argument. If it was a straight line, I'd be asking, hey, what's the slope of that line, right? So, um, well, here's an idea about asking how fast is it moving. I could basically say, let's compare between one second and two seconds. Okay, there's the one second height, there's the two second height. I'll sort of average those two out, right? What's that look like? That looks like the height at time two minus the height at time one, right? That'll give me sort of how much it changes in one second. And that's like delta something, right? Yeah, so so that would be called the change in height. Yeah. And and if you remember the delta, you might remember also that we're going to divide by the change in yeah. time. It's not so big a deal that you put it in here, but notice that one second's gone by. So any time that something besides one second goes by, we're going to have to divide by that. Yeah. Okay, so the height here, I guess the height at time two, let's see, two times two is four, four times 16 is 64. So that's, uh, let's see, 100 minus 64 is 36, minus at time one, Let's see, that's going to get me 16. So what is that, 84? 84. So that's negative. Was it negative? Because 36 minus 84. But conceptually, why is it negative? Because you're going down. Going down. I'm going down. Yeah. Good. OK, so 36 minus 84, what do we have there? Uh, Going down faster over here than it is here. 
right? Mm -hmm. So we could probably be a little more accurate if instead of going from there to there, I went from one to one and a half seconds. I could go from one and a half to one. And because I'm a mathematician and I don't happen to have a calculator handy, I'm going to say, well, you could plug these sort of things in and you could get a little better estimate. But my whole goal is to motivate you to a concept that's about 400 years old. To finding the most exact. To find exactly what this is. I can't resist mentioning this word is called the secant line, yeah. where you take the line between two points. And as you get closer and closer, as you take the limit where this second point gets closer and closer, that is called the tangent line. So the secant line is here in blue. The tangent line is here in red. Okay. Well, how am I going to articulate that tangent line? Well, I want this to get closer and closer. So how am I going to do that? Well, there's, there's a great variety of notations. So here's, here's the notation that I'll use to start with. And Part of the reason there's a great variety of notation is because this is such an important concept. Everybody's using it all around the world. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the height of 1 plus whatever my change in time is, minus whatever my height was to begin with, divided by the change in time. And I'm going to take the limit as that change in time goes to zero. That's pretty important. Let's go ahead and calculate out what this thing is. So limit as the change in time goes to zero. By the way, this is very close to what we call the definition of derivative. Derivative has to do with that rate of change. Uh, but what I'm going to get out here is a number. I'm going to get the slope of the line at one. If instead of putting in a 1, you put in an x, you would truly have the derivative. So let's see. If we plugged 1 plus delta t into my original function, I would have minus 16 1 plus delta t squared plus 100 minus this piece right here, which is Let's see, I have minus 16, 1 squared plus 100, all over delta t. Okay, so what's going to happen there? We've got the limit as delta t goes to zero of, well, what's going to cancel? I suppose I could distribute out this term, and I'd have negative 16 plus the cross term. The cross term is going to be 2 delta t times negative 16. So that's plus negative 32 delta t minus 16 delta t squared. Now, if you like it better, you could use any variable you wanted instead of delta t. You could use a uh, z or a q yeah, or so anything hard. you want. Uh, so that's what comes out of this first term. Plus 100 that minus gonna cancel. plus 16 minus 100. So is the 16. If you don't get every single one of your constants canceling, you did something wrong. Okay? This should always work. Uh, your constants should always cancel. Right? Well, why? Because the constant's not affected at all by the variable, and you've got it positive and you've got it negative. Here I've got a 16 and a plus 16. So notice that every single term has a delta t. So I'm going to factor out that delta t on the top. That gives me a negative 32 minus delta t over 
over delta t. The algebraic cancellation, those cancel. Via substitution, now I don't have anything zero on the bottom, so via substitution, notice what happens is this term goes to zero. What do I get? I get negative 32. That is the velocity after one second. Notice that we've used algebraic cancellation and we've used substitution. That's why we've been learning.